Properties and reactions of hydrocarbons. As the molecule size of a hydrocarbon increases, so a few things change. First thing that changes is that there is an increase in boiling point. If we have a look at these two molecules, we've got ethane, because there's two carbons, and nonane, because there are nine carbons. There are more atoms in this hydrocarbon than there are in this hydrocarbon, so there will be more dispersion forces. If there's more dispersion forces, there's a greater attraction between molecules. This leads to an increase in boiling point. If we have a look at the graph here, which is the boiling points of the alkanes, we'll see that there's a division here between the gases and the liquids. From this side of the line, we're going from four backwards, which are all gases. So any alkane that has four or less carbons will be a gas. Any alkane that has five or more carbons will be a liquid. This is, of course, at room temperature. So this means the gases at room temperature will be methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Anything from pentane upwards such as hexane, nonane, or pretty much any hydrocarbon that's got more than five carbons, which is shown like this, will be a liquid at room temperature because there's more atoms, so there's more dispersion forces. This is also important when it comes to volatility, and volatility is about how easily it evaporates. When you go to the petrol station, you always get that smell of petrol fumes. The fumes that are coming out are uh, volatile hydrocarbons. They're leaving the liquid to become gaseous, so it's called evaporation. Long hydrocarbon chains again have dispersion forces which will keep them inside the liquid rather than disappearing off as a gas. The other thing that increases too is viscosity, which is the thickness. You talk about liquids being viscous, like honey, um, compared to water, which is non-viscous. So the thickness of the liquid. If we look at a short or a small molecule, like ethane, think of it as spaghetti or pasta. If you've got short strands of pasta, they don't tangle up very easily. But if we're looking at a long hydrocarbon, it's more like spaghetti, they can get tangled up. And these long chains tangle, and this is what causes viscosity. It's also partially responsible for that um, volatility that we just spoke about. Combustion reactions. These are one of the most common reactions that you'll know of with hydrocarbons. And we use them in the lab all the time when we burn methane. So burning something means reacting it with oxygen. So here we have methane gas. We react it with oxygen and we always produce carbon dioxide and water. Whenever any hydrocarbon is combusted, so in other words reacted with oxygen, it will always make the products carbon dioxide and water. So another example here is ethene reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. And of course these numbers at the front are different depending on how to balance that equation. Burning of these hydrocarbons is important because it gives us lots of energy when we burn these. And this is important because this is all of our main fuel sources. So it's our petrol, it's our oil, and it's our coal that we burn to make electricity. Very important, very high in energy when these are burnt. However, there's problems associated with that. Things like Oil affects the environment. You can see here the effects of an oil spill, and here's an oil rig on fire. And the pollution caused by burning coal looks like this. This is a typical day in China, and this is one of your major coal power plants. The other problem, of course, is associated with the carbon dioxide that's produced. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and this causes the Earth's atmosphere to heat up. And this is what all the talk is about at the moment, that we must stop burning fuels that produce carbon dioxide and look towards renewable energy resources such as solar power, wind power, that don't produce these carbon dioxide. You'll be asked to balance 
and complete equations, which are combustion reactions. So here we have C2H6, which is ethane reacting with oxygen. It always produces the same products, which are carbon dioxide and water. All we need to do now is balance the equation. So I've got two carbons on this side, so I'll put a two here. I've got six hydrogens on this side, so I'll put a three in front of here to give me six hydrogens. I've now got three oxygens, plus I've got four oxygens here. So I need total of seven oxygens. So I'll put a three and a half in front of the O2. But of course, we can't have three and a half molecules. We need to make these all whole numbers. So the easiest way to do this now is just to multiply the entire equation by two. So this will become a two, this will become seven, four, and a six. It's a balanced equation now. Substitution reactions, another type of reaction that's very common with alkanes. So it occurs in alkanes only, and it's a reaction that requires energy. And what it involves is one of these hydrogens being replaced with another atom. And here you can see chlorines been reacted with methane. One of these hydrogens has been lost and it's been replaced here by chlorine and with HCl forming on the other side. The third type of reaction we're looking at with hydrocarbons are addition reactions and these occur with alkenes. So anything with a double bond and all that's happening here is that this double bond here is breaking open and it's adding the X to one side and the Y to the other side. So we'll show you over here now. So these are your new bonds with your X and your Y over here. And this requires energy and that energy is required to break this double bond. So the double bond breaks and X gets added to this side and Y gets added to this side, as you can see here. So an example of the reaction is the addition of hydrogen to ethene in the presence of a catalyst. You need a catalyst and you need energy and that's all about breaking this double bond. So this double bond is going to open up and hydrogen is going to get added, one on this side and one on this side. So this is the double bond we're talking about. So that bond will break and it will form new bonds coming off the side here. So these hydrogens, this one and this one will go over here and you'll see that here and here now. So this is why it's an addition reaction, because you're adding these to this molecule. Another example, the formation of ethanol from ethene undergoing an addition reaction with steam. So here's steam, which is water. Here's the double bond we're talking about. So this is the bond here that will break. And we've got hydrogen and oxygen that need to be added. So the double bonds have broken and split up here, and you've got your hydrogens and your oxygen. So they've just added across the double bond. And another example here is the formation of polyethene by the addition of ethene. So we're adding, adding ethene to ethene. And this is interesting because what actually happens is these molecules will just join up. It's like these bonds will flip out and they'll join to one another. So they look like something like this in the final product. So this bond's just moved in between this molecule. This one's moved in between this to form one giant molecule, which is also called a polymer. This is why it's called polyethene. Alkenes are more reactive than alkanes, and this is due to the double bond that you see, which can easily form substitution reactions or addition reactions.